Hey, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We are a webinar, as we like to call ourselves. Some people you can call us an online show, a webcast, uh, whatever you like. Um, the, 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 the terminology is up for debate to some people. Some people don't like the word webinar. I don't mind it. Um, I'll own it, yes. <laughs> but whatever you call us, we are here live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's okay. We do record our shows every week, as we are this morning. So um, if you can't join us on Wednesdays, go to our website, and all of our recordings will be there on the, sh on the site. And I'll show you that at the end of today's show. We'll have a recording we post up to our YouTube channel. Um, any presentations, as we have here, will be posted to the Library Commission SlideShare account. And any websites that are mentioned during the show, I also collect them and put them into our Delicious account. So you have all those collected together. Um, we do a, uh, the show is free, both the live show and the recordings free and open to anyone to watch. So um, if you have any colleagues or friends you think might be interested in any of our upcoming topics or any of our recordings, um, send them to our website and have them join up. Uh, we do a mixture of things here, uh, book reviews, mini training sessions, demos, um, basically anything library related, we are happy to have it on the show. That's really our only criteria, is it something for libraries? All types of libraries. The Li Nebraska Library Commission is a state agency for all libraries in Nebraska, so um, any types you could find us doing presentations about. We do have some presentations, some sessions that are done by Nebraska Library Commission staff, but sometimes we bring in guest speakers. And that's what we have this morning. To my left yes, <laughs> is uh, Sabrina Riley, who's from our Union College here in Lincoln, Nebraska. She's the library director there. And then over next to her is Judy Cook, who is with our Lincoln Lancaster County Genealogical Society. Um, also based here in Lincoln. Really? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So we are um, local Lincoln people today who came in through the rain. It's, it's pouring <laughs> rain here this morning, so we're all possibly a little damp <laughs> and disheveled, but we all we made it here. <laughs> um, and a few years ago, Judy, we had you on um, right. to talk about what um, you were doing um, and mentioned some of what was going on with Union College, but um, we knew it was time for an update. Things have changed, moved on, uh, new things, and we, we just actually, if you want the most up-to-date version of this presentation, this is it, because when they came in today, <laughs> Sabrina did change a slide and change a picture on one of these, so um, can't get any more current than, than this. Uh -huh. <laughs> so um, I'll just hand over to you guys to take it away and tell All us about right. what you guys are doing together. Well, thank you very much for listening to us this morning. And uh, this presentation started life as a joint presentation that we did at the Nebraska Library Association conference in October. Right, that's where I first saw about it, yeah, last, right. last fall. Um, so we're just going to dive right in. Sorry. You should be able to use the keyboard now. Yeah, was the there, now it is responding. Yeah. Okay, so just a little bit of background about each of our organizations. And to give you context, I'll just say up front that the uh, Lincoln Lancaster County Genealogical Society Library is housed inside of the Union College Library, which is why this collaboration started and why we're here today. Um, so just so you have that context. Um, Union College is a private, um, largely undergraduate college founded um, and still affiliated by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, it was founded in 1891, our, um, so we're celebrating our 125th anniversary this year. We just had our kickoff with um, Alumni Homecoming here um, a couple weeks ago. And so that celebration will be ongoing until Alumni Homecoming next April. And um, people who are familiar with the city of Lincoln recognize that we have a number of small communities um, within the city now that started life as their own. Oh, own town. Um, mm. People from Nebraska may have heard the name of Havelock or University Place. College View is another one of those communities. Um, so in 1890, when the site was selected for the college, it was just farmland. And um, the town of College View was built by the Adventists at the same time that the college was. And it lived life that way for a couple of decades, but by 1929, the city of Lincoln had grown out to where College View was. It had been five miles from town when in 1890, and today um, College View is just a neighborhood in the city of Lincoln. Um, our Heritage Room is a special collections area within the 
entire academic library. And we're a small college. Uh, we have less than 1,000 students. And so we just have a single library on campus. Um, and our heritage room uh, is kind of a combination. We're interested in the history of Union College and our local College View community, and also the history of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, uh, with an emphasis on what we call the Mid-American Union Territory, um, which comprises Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, North and South Dakota, Minnesota, um, Colorado, and Wyoming. Um, and so those are kind of the areas that we focus on collecting. Anything related to people, um, ministers, uh, church leaders, just regular membership, members of the church, um, history of the institutions, the churches, the schools, the sanitariums that were in that territory. And uh, we get uh, lots and lots of questions from genealogists mm -hmm. who have discovered that they have ancestors who have a connection to the Adventist church. I have a, something to interject here. I also <laughs> found uh, something in the Library mm -hmm. Commission um, collection, uh, a, a postcard ah. that Sabrina had posted that shows the area where I live. I live oh, not I too far know. from there. <laughs> and so the connection here was great for me as far as the community yeah. to um, on the Nebraska Memories Project. And, to find and that's that. true. On a regular basis, we get questions from homeowners in the College View community who want a picture of what their house looked like way back when. Mm. Um, we do have a pretty significant photograph collection, and we're um, getting, bit by bit, we're getting that online. Um, and I'm not sure. I think of the the web address is at the end. Um, I, oh, do, oh, I do have there were some, some I do have the there. addresses there to see our online photo collection. Cool. Oh, Lincoln Lancaster County Genealogical Society is also celebrating a, an anniversary. We are um, 40 years old. Um, wow. The uh, organization began when um, three ladies took a class uh, related to genealogy at Southeast Community College and thought, mm -hmm. well, you know, we ought to get an organization going. And the story is that they met uh, with cocoa and donuts. And, you know, well, <laughs> people in Nebraska happens, like to pick yeah. up on food things, and so mm -hmm. we often do things with cocoa and donuts. But uh, this is a photo of our founders and their teacher. Uh, five years ago, we were able to get together with um, two of the founders and the teacher who came, oh, wow. and that was uh, a great celebration. Uh, go on. Uh, <clears throat> one of the first things our group did was to collect resources. Um, and one of the stories that's fun to tell is the acquisition of old newspapers that the Nebraska State Historical Society had stored in the bunkers at Mead, Nebraska. This was a munitions plant, and so the mm. bunkers are, are like a uh, an mm -hmm. underground, wonderful place with mm -hmm. uh, little creatures and critters that were crawling uh, around. Uh, as you look carefully at the condition of the newspapers that they're carrying out, you need to have an admiration mm -hmm. for the gentleman in the overalls, uh, Mr. Sittler, who went through those newspapers, very carefully gleaned out names of people who were mentioned in the mm -hmm. newspapers, and <clears throat> wrote on uh, little cards uh, what it you know, whose name was there, and then his wife also assisted in typing them up. Mm -hmm. So we have a huge collection of index cards that he had done, and the Society then published the Sittler Index. Uh, in the 70s, that was a very, very useful tool for anyone doing research in this area. Wow. Our first library. Mm -hmm. You'll notice it's, it, it looks very homey, like somebody's a library is trying to achieve. <laughs> Even a fireplace, Sabrina, there's no fireplace. Um, it was in the home of one of our members. Um, and people met there, and uh, people who had things to donate brought them over. As you can imagine, after a while, uh, Perhaps it was the spouse of the genealogist whose home they met in, but someone thought it might be good if we could find another location. <laughs> <clears throat> and about the same time, changes were being made regarding the collection at the Nebraska State Historical Society. Um, the decision was made that even though there were fabulous uh, items that had been uh, donated to the collection, those that did not deal directly or uh, closely to Nebraska, we're not going to be housed there any longer. The, the age-old problem that libraries face of space. Mm -hmm. uh, and so here were these wonderful collections from 
uh, other states, uh, worldwide resources, very expensive items in many mm -hmm. cases that we're not going to have a home. And so we were blessed mm -hmm. with uh, a genealogist librarian at uh, Union College, Chloe Fouts, who knew the librarians, knew the people working at the Nebraska State Historical Society and came up with a suggestion that as a community service, uh, Union College in their new building mm -hmm. could house those materials from the State Historical Society and we could combine it with the ones that were in Cynthia's basement. <laughs> <laughs> so why Union College? I think you can address that, Sabrina. Uh -huh. Uh, well, Union College, a core value of our campus is community outreach and involvement in the community. And so I think this was seen and continues to be seen as a way to provide a service to the community. Um, and, but there are benefits for the college as well. Um, as all of you, and I assume all of you are listening because you have an interest in genealogy, know that genealogists are willing to travel to get the mm -hmm. information they need. And this brings a new audience to our campus that um, would probably never ever hear of Union College otherwise because we're so small. So it gives us the name recognition. It brings us a new clientele, um, especially during the summer months. But anymore, it seems like year-round we're getting visitors yes, for the genealogy yes, collection from all over the country. Um, not long ago, we had two sisters who flew in almost from opposite ends of the country to meet at Union College to do genealogy together on their Lancaster County ancestors. Um, and I think they actually had, yes, their grandfather was a minister in the Adventist Church, right. so they actually came oh, to the heritage. Oh, that's how they made it, how they figured out the connection. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so that was kind of fun, and that's a perfect example of the collaboration that we have with the Genealogy Society, is that people come for their resources and learn there's an Adventist connection and then use ours and vice versa. Right. And the delight um, that they experienced, they were so happy. It's right. It's good to be around when that happens. Right. And then it just in enhances and increases our historical collections. Um, the Genealogy Society collects material related to family history that we wouldn't necessarily collect for an academic college library. We have historical material that they wouldn't necessarily collect for a genealogy collection and we end up sharing the collections with each other. Um, so it has really broadened the range of resources available to both um, audiences. The cooperation commenced with a special event. They had a <laughs> proclamation for Genealogy Week, May 1st through 7th, 1983. And I look at that and see some of the people mm -hmm. who are still involved <laughs> in uh, our genealogy group. Uh, Cindy Drake, you're on there. <laughs> uh, this was uh, something we haven't done for years, and we might consider doing again with all the anniversaries we're celebrating. Well, that says Geology Week is the first week in May. Is it still then, or is it something different? Do we? What are we they often do that? Family History Month in October, um, but oh, okay. uh, I have something in May. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to do some research when I leave. <laughs> Um, and we had some members in the society who were very supportive of genealogy and very generous. In those days, purchasing computers was an expensive thing to do. And Ruth and Dave Mosby uh, contributed computers and funding. And Ruth is pictured here. She gave many hours, as did members of the society. And you'll also see a staff member there from Union College. So there's three of them in that picture. All right. Who worked, that's true, who worked with uh, getting our materials uh, into the library and accessible to people. These, and this is an example of the computer we have <laughs> since replaced with a more modern one. <clears throat> now, marriage records on microfilm were reviewed and original ledgers were saved. Um, first in someone's home and then at Union College. We were given a, a, a closet that we call our archives. Um, at the Ella Johnson Crandall Memorial Library. Uh, and you can see the ledgers are still uh, there, safely cared for, and people worked with indexing and created books that were useful to genealogists who were searching. I mentioned the Sittler Card Index. If you see that large card catalog, excuse me, 
uh, <clears throat> that uh, contains all those cards uh, that he and his wife collected. We were recently able to scan those cards so that we now have them in a digital format. And on the cards, there was actually additional information that we didn't put in the original indexing. So this is where we got tuned into the idea that digital preservation is, is a very good idea because sometimes when you index, you, you choose only basic categories. On the left, you'll see an example of a probate record that we have uh, from Lancaster County that we also have some of those stored. Now, 40 years later, <laughs> <laughs> we've uh, changed. We, Clove House uh, is deceased, but we have uh, on our library committee, uh, Cindy Cochran, who some of you may recognize as someone who worked at Lincoln Public Libraries, uh, is an avid genealogist, and if you can recognize this photo, travels around the world mm -hmm. to different places doing her genealogy, observing how things are done, and is very capable also as an archivist, which we needed that uh, when papers are <laughs> disintegrating. You know, what do we do? And so we turned to Cindy and to Sabrina, um, who is uh, also... I knew her first as a librarian, now she's just an outstanding <laughs> genealogist, and so... <laughs> I'm sorry, the slide was slow to change there, so, okay. Um, when the genealogy library moved into the Union College Library, an agreement was made at that time um, on who would do what task. And uh, so the Genealogy was Society was responsible for their own collection and development, acquiring their own materials um, for the mechanical prep and processing, for reshelving, for reference. I trained my staff um, to point visitors into the direction of the Genealogy Library, but we don't actually provide any reference service except the very bare minimum. Uh, the genealogy volunteers are there on a regular basis. It used to be dependably one day a week, but I think you all are there almost every day of the week. Somebody. <laughs> and then and then there are people who are on call. We have email and phone. Um, when people call ahead, we encourage them to contact the genealogy volunteers and to make appointments so that we can be sure someone is there. So this is not something that is a huge drain on Union College's library staff. Um, but that agreement was very outdated when I looked at it. It didn't seem like it was that long ago, but the date on there is November 24, 2014. Time has gone really fast. Yeah. Um, Union College had a completely new administration. Um, we had gone from a very early online catalog, OPAC access, to now we're fully in the web era and we're cataloging on OCLC connection, and now our library has moved into WorldShare. Um, just the way we do things is completely different. And when I looked at that old agreement, it was just completely outdated. And so I went to Cindy and I said, we need to completely rewrite this. And it needs to go back to each of our, in this case of the Genealogy Society, their board, in my case, to my administration. So all of my new administrators know what this collaboration is about. And uh, so we did that. So this is kind of the main points um, of how we work together and what's in that agreement. So Union College provides a shelf space um, rent-free. A okay. few years ago, I did go to the Genealogy Society and asked for a gift to help us with a signage project we had. And ever since then, they have graciously given us a gift each year, a monetary gift. And we appreciate that very much. Um, but we don't expect any rent. Um, we manage their circulation for them, so patrons are issued our community um, borrower's cards, I should say members of the Genealogy Society. Um, they do have to live in Nebraska, and generally in the Lincoln area, to be eligible for the card. So we don't give cards to out-of-state visitors who come. They just need to use materials on site. Um, and this is that slide that was updated. We had a picture of a really old, homemade, ugly card that we've been using. And just yesterday, so. our brand new... Um, Community patron cards arrived, so I had to. I can that. hear the trumpets right now, <laughs> <laughs> but she also tells me, and now I need to come in and renew my card. <laughs> Get the new one, yes. Um, so, as part of that circulation function, we provide security for um, the genealogy collection. Um, we've given them what we loosely call the office. Um, 
it's really is an oversized closet, <laughs> truth be told. Um, and then there's actually a couple of other storage locations that we're giving them in the library right now. Um, I have plans, probably long-range plans for some renovations, and so some of the space usage will come under reconsideration um, in the future. But um, we will, again, as we have all along, work together on that. Um, we also do the... I say cataloging loosely, but the data entry, we do not give the Genealogy Society direct access to our role share or OCLC connection accounts. Um, we do the actual entry, but they will search WorldCat to identify records, and they will print those out and then make notes for any changes they want on the records. And so um, they're doing a good share of the work for cataloging, but my staff does the actual logging into the database and the data entry and then the genealogy volunteers uh, take it from there. This is continuing that our society uh, continues uh, to acquire acquisitions and gifts from our members. Uh, some of our members who started doing genealogy in the early days have fantastic things that they mm -hmm. purchase from other states. And <clears throat> I guess this is something I have to keep stressing. We are the Lincoln-Lancaster County Genealogical Society, but our collection um, is uh, something that can be used for worldwide uh, reference. Uh, oh, sure. We have many mm -hmm. things, excellent things from Maine, from Massachusetts, from New York, from Virginia. Um, we, we encourage people to check out uh, the library catalog, and we've had people very surprised who find uh, something that they really want. They check on WorldCat and eventually find out that it's located right here in London. <laughs> uh, and if they wouldn't have thought that, they were uh, uh, anticipating awesome. traveling a long way. Uh, we manage the collection. I, I have an unfinished project I'm working on for many years now on uh, identifying some of the periodicals that we have. We worked with using Percy to uh, locate some of the things that we might have. Uh, we do not have complete collections of periodicals, but we've also gifted some of the ones that we've had uh, where we had only a partial set and helped to complete a set, for instance, in Fort Wayne, Indiana or in uh, Missouri. This is one of the great things about having someone, uh, people like Cindy and Sabrina working with us. We, we don't just think uh, in, in a very narrow parameters. We think globally about the idea of other people want to have access to these materials. Uh, we prepare the things for cataloging primarily. I shouldn't say we. That's largely done by Cindy. Uh, we do have volunteers who do the processing after cataloging. And then we reimburse uh, Union College for the processing supplies and a percentage of the cataloging subscription. Uh, and we've just love that uh, procedure. It, mm -hmm. We don't have to buy as many things related to history than a genealogy library would mm -hmm. because of some of the excellent things already there. The collection continues to grow in quality and quantity with varied media representation. Mm -hmm. We actually have things from 50 states and from other countries. Uh, you'll notice uh, some of the things uh, on the view there that show you the variety. We're moving into uh, more of the media things, which right now we're shelving in the area with the other resources for that. We recently uh, acquired, uh, any genealogist will know the name of, of John Coletta. Uh, John Coletta has done um, a, a series for beginning genealogists and for experienced genealogists with a DVD and an accompanying booklet, and we have uh, two copies of that now. We're using one for teaching proce processes and one in the library to check out. This was uh, just one of our most exciting things, and this was just this last summer. Uh, it was one of those where <clears throat> stopping in and talking to Cindy when she needed to be working on other things. And Sabrina, you mean? Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Sabrina. I'm looking at Sabrina. The two. My age is showing. Okay, uh, and saying, we we just got to get this done. We're celebrating our 40th anniversary. We've had these books for so many years in the library, and nobody knows that we have them because they're not listed uh, in a way that people can find them. And so we came up with this process. Uh, we uh, participated in Give to Lincoln Days, and I have to do a plug for that. It's coming up in May. Uh, as a nonprofit, we participated in this, and... 
primarily our members are the ones who contributed, but when they saw how much benefit there would be in getting uh, the uh, getting something done before our 40th anniversary, uh, they gave contributions very generously and we were able to get new equipment and do this project last summer. Where, tell more about it, Sabrina. Okay. Um, well, as I mentioned before, we want to have only our hired library staff um, doing actual data entry into our OCLC accounts. And so the idea that I came up with when Cindy and Judy were talking to me about how can we get this stuff cataloged, because I have one full-time cataloger on staff, but we have um, students from time to time who we give additional training to and really trust to do more of that data entry. So I offered that option. I said if, if we selected the student and trained them um, to do copy cataloging, could you come up with the money to reimburse us for the wages? And they thought that it would work. I worked with our human resources department, and they were happy for that. Um, and so um, the student he's pictured here is the one who was hired last summer to work um, on this project. And she did about 20 hours a week was our goal, I think. Right. We shared. She worked 20 hours for you, 20 hours for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, we then... Um, we invoice the Genealogy Society once a year for those OCLC expenses and processing expenses, and so we just added the student labor and employment um, taxes like FICA and stuff that they reimbursed us for all of those expenses um, for a block of time that the student contributed. Um, they were so thrilled with the results, and it worked really well for us um, that we're going to do it again this summer. Okay. Um, Assuming yes. that the genealogy board approves the, the, the funding. The board uh, uh, recommended it at our meeting last night. We're taking it to our membership Thursday night. Uh, we're very excited about this time the possibility of uh, working with two students uh, because we want to preserve the work that our founders did. They went out to cemeteries and collected mm -hmm. information. They did. You saw carrying those old newspapers oh, and yeah. gleaning them and doing that. Well, those things are kept in books that were that are now outdated and resold, and so we we are learning the value of putting things in digital format so that more people can find them. And um, uh, we have uh, used again give to Lincoln Day funds to buy uh, a couple of large format scanners and. Nice. Um, uh, we're, we're really excited about it. I'm, I'm going to do my utmost to convince the uh, society on Thursday to uh, go ahead with this because uh, we have tried as volunteers to do this at home. And it's the kind of thing where if a child cries or the phone rings or whatever, you stop your scanning, uh, you forget where you are. Uh, we have learned the value of having a well-trained student. Yeah. And there is a bigger blessing in this for us this year because um, during this, this summer, we go down to between four and five students, usually what we hire mm. in the summer. And this year, I have six students who want to work, stay wow. and work all summer. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going <laughs> to, actually, it's six and a half. I don't know how I'm going to pay for the one and a half. <laughs> and so I'm going to have two of these students who will each try to do about 20 hours a week for the Genealogy Society. So they're planning to, they're hoping to be able to reimburse us for 40 hours a week. Um, and so that's, going to enable two students to have jobs this summer that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. And going to uh, <clears throat> push some people like me into a little fundraising, but it's for a good cause. <laughs> I really believe in it. Are these students um, library school students in library school programs, or are no, they just they, regular? No, they're, they're all undergraduate students oh, wow. at Union College, mm -hmm. and they're in a wide range of majors. This particular mm -hmm. student was a music major, mm -hmm. probably music education. Um, she wanted to do cataloging? Wow. She yeah, incredibly yes, she fast did. And, and carefully. Yeah. Yes. Um, the students who will be working this summer, one of them is a history major, and uh -huh. the other one is a graphic design major, hmm. who has done a lot of stuff for me in the heritage room yeah. as well. Um, yeah, I have found a great value in having a graphic design major on my staff oh, at yeah. all times. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, uh, we make financial gifts to the library each year, and uh, sometimes uh, some of our members do uh, some additional ones uh, as thank yous to the staff. Um, we do referrals between the Heritage Room and LLCGS. Uh, 
I recommend it to some people who want to learn more about it. And we try to tour the area. Um, and then as Sabrina, I got your name right this time, <laughs> said that um, uh, she will sometimes find people doing research that we can help with some of the city directories and other things that we have collected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, I think the next few slides are going to talk about that synergy in programming that right. we have found great benefit in um, working together on programs to for both for campus and for the community. And then our newest thing um, is sharing equipment. We have um, an eight and a half by fourteen flatbed scanner that we use in our heritage room because we really don't have a great many materials that are bigger than that. And when we have had materials bigger than that, we've done some outsourcing. Um, but now the Genealogy Society has bought a larger scanner mm -hmm. that they needed for their materials, and um, they're willing to share that with us right. for the small amount that we would need it. It's it's something that I think libraries might think about, uh, that genealogists mm -hmm. have these baptismal records and other things that are odd sizes. Right. Oh, yeah. And even um, you know, uh, some of the original records that were done were not on eight and a half by 11, they were on by nine by 12. Uh -huh. So you either lose something from the top or the bottom or the side, and the although it takes more space, mm -hmm. the large bed doesn't, doesn't cost any more. Yeah. This is one of our tours. We try to schedule one of these a year where we uh, invite not only our membership but people from the community to come and visit the college. And we always try to work it out with Sabrina's schedule so she can show things in the heritage room because uh, genealogists love to see historical um, memorabilia. It's, it's part of what we <laughs> search for in our own lives. We uh, had a, a regional genealogy workshop at College View Adventist Church, which is right across the street and has a wonderful facility for us to have a workshop. And what we worked into it during that day was to walk across the street and go and see the library. Uh, the bottom photo shows us using the facilities of the church for displays where we invited anybody that we, uh, well, Nebraska Library Commission's represented there <laughs> and other organizations that would be helpful to us in doing genealogical research. And then we uh, got some people over. Uh, I see a, a librarian there from uh, Omaha looking at our Sittler cards and realizing what a treasure they are. Mm -hmm. And then we have tours uh, to come and visit the Union College Library, as I said. But this particular one, we were showing them the things that we have collected in the archives rooms that Union College makes available for us. So you see people looking at ledgers and documents. And we also use this as a time to get rid of our duplicate materials. Um, when people very generously donate things, as any librarian knows, sometimes you, you get something that you don't want well, or do not need. Well, when we have genealogy workshops, uh, selling duplicate materials is often a, another source of income mm. for us because uh, Some they may like want that actual, 1971 yeah. uh, that you have uh, because they still like the print copy. They want to mm -hmm. scan a particular portion of it, something like that. Yeah. Oh, and this was a special treat. Oh, uh, well, I think we're getting short on time, so I won't talk about this too okay. long. <laughs> but this is a Civil War era flag in our collection um, that I've been researching and sharing the story of. And um, so it, this is a great conversation piece at times. And uh, yeah, I don't know what to say on short notice here, but we shared the story with the Genealogy Society on we, one of the two. We, of us. No, you can share. We have plenty of time. <laughs> well, but she's, yeah. she wants to save the story for more, more covered. We, <laughs> okay. we got to see it up close. Yeah. This yes. was this was one of the presentations I did for the Genealogy Society what two years ago now? Maybe even three. And it was about an hour and a half wow. program on this, but. Um, Basically, there is no way to verify the authenticity of this flag and its role at Gettysburg. Hmm. Um, and I used genealogy to find what we can find, and it turned into a whole um, study on the field of memory studies and the role uh -huh. that plays on the accuracy of people's memories. Mm -hmm. And had a lot of implications for genealogy right. as well. Right. Um, 
So oh, a lot of that you're trusting what people said happened correct. and what who who did what. And, and that where was something that came was very from, true. In right? 1986, when the college accepted this, they just took the family story that, mm -hmm. and the story was that this hung from the podium at Gettysburg when Abraham Lincoln spoke. Well, turns mm -hmm. out Abraham Lincoln didn't stand at a podium, <laughs> so it couldn't have hung from a podium. Um, but and there's a whole the right lot image. more. There's a whole lot more. I should have added a link on this because I have the story published in our Union College Alumni Magazine, and that's online, so people can find the the detailed story there. Um, but what I did learn is that the family itself was very interesting um, in learning more about the experience of the common citizen of Gettysburg during the battle and what right. they what they suffered and what they lost. Um, so there's there are some great stories there. Uh, and Sabrina brought in the human interest part of it with the genealogy, not just the facts about the flag, and and that made it a wonderful story. And every genealogist knows that you need to check your sources and document and document. And that was part the, of it. I just did a search on Union yeah. College mag alumni magazine Civil War. Um, actually. No, this is not. That's Union College in New York. Oh, they copied really? our logo. Oh, I should say that online. <laughs> All right, so. I'll look more. We'll get the, we'll get the right link to that article. We, we, we'll, we can add so it. We can, we can sure. add it to the PowerPoint afterwards. Mm -hmm. Sure. But it, it, it was an amazing, amazing study. study. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yes. It. Um, yes. Um, but since it, I made that slip up for, for the record, um, Union College in Lincoln, Nebraska had our logo before Union College in Schenectady had theirs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and this was all happening during the Civil War anniversary when everyone was really yeah. keyed into it, yeah. and so it was um, it was one of those synergies in in more ways than one. Yes, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we invite Sabrina to be a speaker frequently to our society. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes we give her plenty of notice. Sometimes <laughs> it's short notice, uh, <clears throat> but she came and updated us on blogging. Um, we have had presentations on blogging. Uh, many of our members are um, they're, they're still so involved in the hunt that they haven't picked up the idea of, of blogging. And she um, showed us what she had done, and she can tell more about her blog. She also helped us know more about the library catalog interface. She told us something that we know so well about the value of oral interviews. And because she is as up to date as she is, she also talked about using DNA. And this has been something that the mm -hmm. two of us have just been excited about uh, mm -hmm. when we see each other. About I, well, I, I end up being very jealous because she's making a lot more discoveries, <laughs> but <clears throat> in, in less time, by the way. But um, this was a wonderful presentation for us. And you need to tell about the picture of the charming person there. Oh, well, she pulled um, the picture of me with my great aunt in from my blog post, and I had that there. That was actually uh, New Year's Day a couple of years ago, and we were working on genealogy in that picture, trying to collect whatever stories my great aunt can remember. And uh, she, she's a treasure. Um, she will be 100 on June 2. Wow. And nice. she lives in Michigan, and a few weeks ago when they had another blizzard in her home, her son, who cares for her, um, was teasing her about getting her shoes to go to the gym that day, and he t she took him seriously, and um, they went to the gym in the blizzard. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that just underscores the kind of person she is. She's an inspiration for me, and um, we Tell love to about talk. Your DNA. We love to talk family memories every time we're together. And some of those, um, just to say a little bit more about my blog. My blog is um, just kind of whatever inspires me at the moment. Um, related to both family and local history. Um, a lot of what I've shared on there right now is about my own family's genealogy, and I use that as a tool to share what I'm discovering with my other family members who are interested. Um, but as archivist for the college, um, I do a lot of historical research along biographical lines, which means genealogy research, mm -hmm. um, figures um, and alumni related to the college, and um, those stories frequently end up on my blog as well. So there's a lot of College View and Union College um, history um, in there as well. Uh, one of the things that she brought out and helped us realize that um, some of us as, as genealogists find some, oh, usually in the middle of the night, and it's like, <laughs> how do, you know, okay, I'm squealing, I'm excited, I found this. Do I wake up family members who wish I didn't spend so much time on this, or what do I do about it? 
And she suggested if you put it on the blog, you can share your excitement right then and there. Mm -hmm. uh, you All don't right. have to wait till there's a, a genealogy <laughs> meeting or you meet somebody else who likes the same hobby. And, yeah, yeah. So it was a, a great uh, presentation related to the value of blogging. Mm -hmm. We just love having access to the entire uh, library for research. Um, this, this has to do not only with the many wonderful historical things, but the <clears throat> excuse me, some of the things related to sociology or the maps that they have there. Um, we uh, can search for things that are in the collection and get our handy library card and check it out, or if it's a reference material, use it there. Uh, some of our people love coming and reading the current newspapers. Genealogists <laughs> do live a lot in the past, but <laughs> they, they, they enjoy that, uh, and it, it's it is, um, it's a great setting. Uh, it's, it's just um, a place that um, we enjoy going. Um, um, well, we'll go on and okay. show some other ways we use it. Uh, <clears throat> we, uh, the, the War of the Rebellion <laughs> was the title used for the Civil War. 140 plus volumes of that. Um, and there are many who's who's books. Uh, some of the people have found there's still something. Yes, you found it online, uh, the documentation, but if you find it printed in a book, for some of us who are a little over 50, um, it's there's something about finding your ancestor's name in a mm -hmm. book in the library about the Civil War um, that is is a gift that the college provides for us that we could never maintain. We We wouldn't have the funds to get those volumes. And then we have training sessions encouraging the use of the library. I need to insert here, we also have training sessions at Lincoln City Libraries. Uh, mm -hmm. We do them, we have a weekly session at, um, on, on Sundays at um, Walt Library. We've been doing sessions at, at Gear, at Thompson, at Isley. Uh, we help people who want to do genealogy learn how to use library resources. And we we do that in weekly sessions. We do that one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Uh, we have LLCGS members who uh, lead uh, classes at Southeast Community College, encouraging uh, people to use, do genealogy. And we have partnered uh, with OLLI, the Osho Lifelong Learning Institute at UNL, to do workshops, some of them involving computer searches, as you can see here. And in this, we are always saying, begin at your library. Go to your library. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most libraries provide Ancestry.com so you can get started before you get the subscription. Learn how to navigate it. Use the things to search for census records. Um, look at the city directories in your library. So we are um, we're great proponents of libraries and, and uh, because they mean so much to genealogists. So we're... If anyone listening has another venue <laughs> where we can do it, we keep searching for that. Ways to help more people uh, do their family history without thinking that it's going to work the way it does, for instance, on who do you think that you are, where sometimes they find their solution in five minutes. Mm -hmm. We do <laughs> instill the that. TV show, yeah. Right. But they get excited, which is wonderful. I love those shows for that. But the reality check is something we can help provide. We steer visitors to Union Collection, uh, and here mm -hmm. some of the people are enjoying the maps. Uh, this is a mixed group. It's our society, but also other people from the community that we invited to come. And I apologize for the quality of the picture, but that's the best one we had. <laughs> <laughs> um, and our volunteers really enjoy working in the library and being there. Uh, you see uh, Gary and Vera Salmon there in the center slide who uh, have um, given countless hours and are still coming in weekly to work. Uh, they do this as a team, uh, volunteering to make the, the books ready to use. There, uh, uh, <laughs> this picture of Cindy working with a group, telling someone, and another one hopefully coming in. Our animation isn't working. There we go. This is a gentleman who's worked from the beginning of our organizational time and it's one of those people I admire so much who made the transition from paper to computer and uh, has uh, helped maintain a database, um, done a lot of work in the beginning and still continues to do so. 
<clears throat> and we have people who continue to work at indexing, preserving. Um, you see the, the image here of two people who brought in their camera and tried to work out hours when they could come in and not be in anyone's way and uh, take photos of over 8,000 naturalization records. Naturalization being a very important tool for genealogists. It tells when our immigrant an ancestors chose to become a citizen of the United States. And we also work with microfilm. Um, uh, we've, um, we continue to work with it. Um, I want to mention our website uh, at llcgs.info. I'm going to stress that dot info. Mm -hmm. If you go to dot com, you, you'll something get else. something you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> but it's our, our okay. acronym llcgs.info. This is this has been a really fun thing. Uh, we started out with some people who wanted to, well, partly after um, we heard about family mm -hmm. stories, who wanted to write their memoirs, their family stories, and they were overwhelmed. They sort of had the idea, oh dear, do we have to say I, I was born on and do a whole big book. And this wonderful teacher who just turned 90, uh, who was a math teacher in her, her heritage and is an artist, a, a wonderful uh, personality. And so she said, well, I'll teach a class, but where can we meet? And so I suggested Union College, and we started out in a small room with eight people. Well. We have now 40 people on the list, wow. and we Sabrina has graciously allowed us to use the room. They love going into the room because it's called the Writer's Studio, <laughs> and it just sort of gives you an aura when you go in. Mm -hmm. I, Actually, the, the long name is the Studio for Writing and Speaking, but on other campuses, it's, it's what mm -hmm. would be known as the Writing Center. Okay. All right, but, but it, it, it's got a <laughs> special <the> atmosphere. <laughs> right. And... Uh, uh, there have been tears and laughter and wonderful, wonderful. They, they celebrated this uh, existing for over a year. Um, people inspire others. Uh, you hear a story that someone writes and thinks, oh, I, something like that happened to me. And you go home and write it. It's just been, and if we did not have the place to do it, it wouldn't happen. And so uh, libraries consider <laughs> consider finding space for not only doing genealogy, but coming and doing writing and uh, sharing. It, it doesn't have to be a class in grammar. That's not what we emphasize. Mm -hmm. It's those memories. We use the Heritage, heritage Room. room. Yeah. yeah, I'll talk about some of the resources here. Um, the Union College Heritage Collections. Oh, that was supposed to be two bullet points. I apologize. It's another mistake we didn't catch. We have photographs in two different instances of Content DM, one being Union College Heritage Collections, which uses um, OCLC's Quick Start program that we have through mm -hmm. the Nebraska Library Commission. And then the Nebraska Memories is mm -hmm. a Nebraska Library Commission project that also uses Content DM, and we have a selection of our photos in that instance as well. So. Um, those are two different resources there. Um, the Seventh-day Adventist Obituary Index is a free index available on the internet. It's linked from our uh, Union College website. And it indexes obituaries published in official um, publications of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, the oldest one being what today is called Adventist Review. Um, started in about 1851 with the name Advent Review and Sabbath Herald. And it um, is the major news media of the Adventist church. And back in the day, it was the only publication. And so it has wonderful obituaries in it. Um, there's one from my family that's um, my great, great, great grandfather's first wife um, when she died. And it had very little about her birth date or about her whole life, but this whole long description of her spiritual state at her death. So they're just they're just fun to read because you never know what you're going to find. Some of them are long biographies, some of them are just little snippets, um, but they can be fun, fun to find. Um, the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists has an extensive um, archives online through their archives department. They digitize many Adventist periodicals. And again, there's a lot of biographical information to be mined from there. Um, because of news announcements that will advertise that this person um, was going here and doing this work, whether it was mission work, evangelism, 
teachers moving to a different school. Um, sometimes I've, when I'm researching former Union College staff members from the early 1900s, I'll find little like press announcements about so and so is going on vacation here, or they went to this sanitarium for a break, or yeah. you, you just never know what you're going to find. <laughs> Um, very, very interesting. And then our collection um, itself includes a lot of um, local history artifacts. Um, we have the College View newspapers on microfilm. Um, we have the old gates from the original College View Cemetery. Wow. Um, it's just so a lot of actual. Physical. You have to. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of physical stuff too. That I don't even have room for. It's like. I want to keep it, but where do I put it? What do we do with it? We really need a, a larger museum space than we have. Um, but a lot of interesting things. Um, again, some personal paper collections as well. Um, we have a set of diaries from um, a woman who lived in College View for a long time, and just interesting stuff. So if you're looking for something, visit our website to see what we have there. Talk to me because we have a lot more stuff that hasn't been organized yet that you won't see um, listed on our web page. Um, yeah. We support each other's events. Uh, <clears throat> when we were uh, focusing on a time period, um, I became <clears throat> a suffragette. Uh, <laughs> this was our World War I program. Yeah. And, um, um, the, yeah. uh, the ladies pictured there have a button collection, and they also had uh, memorabilia from World War One. They were delighted to display it at Union mm -hmm. College, um, and so it was a, a good connection. I There's more, this is more pictures from the same program. Um, the idea was to introduce our students and our community uh, at the beginning of the centennial for World War One. Um, to what society and culture was doing then, and so we looked at both the home front and the battle front. Um, what life was like. A women's a right to vote um, mm -hmm. that they, many of them mm -hmm. don't realize mm -hmm. wasn't always there. <laughs> and as part of that whole World War One <laughs> series, um, with the Humanities Nebraska, we each sponsored a speaker. Um, and so the Genealogy Society had Susie McLean come in to talk about clothing from the World War One era, and then we had David Wells to come in and talk about popular music of the era. Uh, and Mike Menard is one of our faculty members at Union College who did a program on um, poetry. And this is just a sampling. We actually had a lot more programs throughout throughout the year. And it was good to have a, the, the site. We were doing them at Union College. Um, mm -hmm. and that was helpful for And us. then both the college and the Genealogy Society worked on publicity to sometimes it worked to bring in a much larger audience than we would have. And some of the audiences were <laughs> you never know. Yeah. This was a, a fun uh, cooperative thing. Uh, uh, Sabrina is responsible for how it happened. Okay, you want me to tell that? Okay. Right. Um, I had one of our history majors who worked for me in the heritage room for a couple of years, and she's involved with the Seventh day Adventist Pathfinder Club, which is kind of similar to Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. um, they work on honor badges. And so my student, after she graduated, she was working with the local club and helping them with their genealogy honor badge. Mm -hmm. And so she called me. She's like, can I bring them to the library for the genealogy collection? And I'm like, Perfect. well, <laughs> probably, but you need to talk to Judy and Cindy. <laughs> so I got them together at the time, and the genealogy volunteers um, took the event from there. I think there oh, were 12 of them who came that night. I guess that was the only picture. They, they, I'm sorry, they learned. They learned a lot about it and were excited. And uh -huh. as were the, the young people and their families. That was, mm -hmm. that was a good outreach for us to reach young people. What we're hoping to pursue now as another thing is, and again, uh, other libraries may consider the because I know that homeschoolers use libraries a great deal, mm -hmm. and that that's a good place to, because they focus on family and family stories, it's a good place to introduce genealogy. We can use uh, Union College Library Wi-Fi to locate resources. Uh, if you're uh, at the library re researching and you want to do a search for a, a map of the area that you're looking at, uh, this is wonderful to be able to do that. The Wi-Fi is, is wonderful for us because most people bring now um, their tablet or something when they're doing research mm -hmm. and they like to get onto Wi-Fi. 
<clears throat> and then what we now realize, and this is an outdated version of our map, but uh, in the lower right-hand side, you'll see uh, as of you know, at that date, time period in 2015, people from all over the world um, are checking resources at, by using our website. Uh, and this is our, our logo. Once again, there is our website address. Uh, please do visit it and go to the part, well, look at all of it, <laughs> but look at the part about library catalog because then you'll see what we've got there. Yeah. And I was also looking at it and saw the, um, you were mentioning you do things at Union College and with Lincoln City Libraries. There's a calendar of events on there so you can right. see what is coming up that the society is right. involved in and, and where you can go to join in. We're doing something at the Denton Cemetery this weekend. So if we have anyone who enjoys <laughs> the cemetery very interesting. Yeah. check our website. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Recently, uh, another thing that we did was uh, we had a conference where uh, we invited Lisa Louise Cook, who is one of the uh, internationally acclaimed genealogists that um, we have seen at national conferences. She came to Lincoln <clears throat> and uh, I, we asked her to stay a little longer uh, than just coming in and making a presentation so she could see the resources here. She was very impressed with uh, the Union College setup and asked if she could do um, a podcast where she interviewed Sabrina and Cindy. I got both names right. Yeah. <laughs> and that has since aired. It was on in February, uh, but you can search through her podcast and see uh, that interview. Um, but again, it was helping a well-known genealogist know that people do do genealogy this side of the Mississippi. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, people, genealogists think it's it's New England or it's Salt Lake City. Um, we have a lot here in Nebraska. Okay. And, and this is our list of promised uh, URLs. And Krista has been mm -hmm. looking up the article that I talked about earlier about the yep, flag. I found the right one. And, yes. and we can add that to the list here That's as right well. One. That yes. is the correct <laughs> one. I added Nebraska into my search. I'm a librarian. I'm know how to do these things, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you think um, I would have known that too, being from New York, I know about Union College in New York. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Didn't know about the, uh, um, the logo controversy, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have the same thing with Bitten and Lincoln. Some people see Lincoln County. Ah, uh, that's not yes. a thing. That's not the right, yeah, that's right. not what we are now. Just to mm -hmm. put out the disclaimer over and over, we are not restricted to, um, in fact, uh, our best link in Lancaster County materials are at the Nebraska State Historical Historic. Society mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> because th those things are already there. But what we have um, uh, available, we're so thankful people can find. Yeah. And I, mm -hmm. I just have to emphasize that blog. Uh, if you um, if you need to cheer up on a rainy day, go to Sabrina's book. <laughs> <laughs> like today, oh, here. Thank you. I'm <laughs> blushing, Judy. <laughs> but it has it has been a lot of fun to write that. Um, we're, we're a small library, and I do have a staff, but I work alone in the archives, and so I do feel like a solo librarian at times, and so that has been a great way when I've had a really exciting find in our collections to have that blog as an outlet to write about whatever's happening and have a way of sharing that. So. There you go. All right. That's yes. the end All of right. our presentation. Great. We're open Thank you. for yes. questions if there is so, time. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, um, it's a little after 11, but we did start a little late as well, so that's fine. <laughs> okay. um, we, and we'll go as long as necessary. If people do have questions or anything for, that, for our wrap-up here, um, we don't get cut off, obviously, at 11 o'clock. We'll go as long as is necessary. So if you do have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, um, type it into your GoToWebinar interface in the questions section. Um, nobody said anything during your presentation. So, um, okay. they very listening very intently, obviously. <laughs> um, I could tell that from people's uh, um, activity on their systems. Um, so if you have any questions, type them in. Uh, this is um, oh, just some thank yous coming in. Really good presentation, okay. good info. Yeah, this is great. Um, I, like I said, I'd seen when you guys had done this at um, conference before um, last fall at our state library conference and thought it was very interesting. Um, and this geolog genealogical research is... Yeah, people who are into it, it's just so, even people who aren't really into it, like actual researchers, it's always so interesting and fun to get into when you find, like you said, your family's name in something. At my house, we do have, um, our family came to Ellis Island um, from mm -hmm. Ireland, 
and we do have the frame picture of the the ship they came in and this the pages of you know, when they were um, officially you know brought in oh, the ship followed list. through yep yeah very interesting yeah right. um, oh we do have a question do you have how much information do you potentially have on the checks of Nebraska that that's I know that is a big population we in the do state. have yeah. oh I um, we do have some excellent ones I I saw one. That uh, Cindy just recently put in for cataloging uh, uh, the Czech history of Nebraska. <laughs> Here I am. It's a red book. <laughs> uh, but we we do have information on the Czechs. Great. So go to the website and look up and see what they're doing. <clears throat> and if it isn't on the website yet, please send an email to um, a re, um, on our website. We have an email that goes directly to the library, mm -hmm. LLCGS Library Info, mm -hmm. and. Um, That'll go to Cindy, and that's how people do uh, lookups too. If they um, if they're interested in something and they want us to do a lookup, I forgot to mention mm -hmm. that we do that by sending they they send an email through contact, and we have a member who uh, checks daily, sometimes more than once a day, uh, any messages that come in, and then they're forwarded to the board member or the librarian or whoever it is who can handle um, that response, mm -hmm. and we do people who will. Excuse me. We do have people who will go um, and uh, look things up, uh, and um, we um, also sometimes have access to some materials that aren't yet up on the website that haven't been cataloged. So it's mm -hmm. always good to ask to check yeah. in. Yeah, because right. it'd be things well, that are in the in the library but haven't been put onto the. Um, and I was just going to clarify on the llcgs.info, they have a database listing of resources they have, and I think you get them in there right away, even when they haven't been cataloged yet. And then the material that's cataloged is then listed in Union College's right. OPAC mm -hmm. um, with just the location, shelving location of genealogy. Uh, so there are two different ways to search the LLCGS and, collection. And then, but check them both, because mm -hmm. you may find something that's an outstanding historical resource uh, in that collection, right. that's why we, we, we love that. Uh, mm -hmm. Sharing. I'm going to do a quick little promotion for. Um, we have a program coming. <clears throat> excuse me. Tomorrow night on Evernote. Uh, this is mm -hmm. a, a oh, software yeah. that we're finding a free software that has been very helpful for mm -hmm. um, genealogists, and we're just learning how to use it. It helps us with um, keeping track of, you know, so that you don't run down that path you know, more than once about mm -hmm. <laughs> checking mm -hmm. something, keeping track, documenting where we've been. Um, it's been an excellent one for bringing in images um, mm -hmm. and the OCR uh, capability. Oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it is uh, something that libraries might consider having classes on using Evernote. Mm -hmm. We find that if we do this kind of thing with our membership, that they become more prepared than when they go to a library mm -hmm. and um, I know Evernote is some some academic libraries for students doing <coughs> research. They'll use that to track what and they're writing a research paper or doing their right. mm -hmm. um, dissertations down to just the freshman classes. They'll teach that as a way to yeah track yeah you know, what resources did you already look at, what have you found, you know, so you can just remember everything you did. And it's very yeah, yeah. useful to students. Anybody anybody doing any kind of research, and that's what geological mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have a state conference coming up uh, in Kearney. Um, uh, April 29th and 30th, uh, where we have guest uh, genealogists coming in. Uh, that's it's pushing the limit on registration, but it's still <laughs> something to look up. But just to let them know, in 2017, um, the state genealogy conference will be held here in Lincoln, ah, nice. and they invited. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's. Oh, I always forget. There's an initial in front of his name. I think it's D. D. Josh Taylor, who is involved a lot with. Ancestry Roadshow, and it's probably the most prominent genealogist, and he's coming to Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, so he'll come next year. Nice. And, and the other right. thing is that he has Nebraska roots. Ah. So uh, we'll be doing some things. So he's got to be very excited about that himself. <laughs> that, that we'll want to get um, more and more uh, librarians uh, tuned into because um, I love going to the small towns in Nebraska that have genealogy rooms. In, in places set aside, mm -hmm. they, they're so welcoming, they're so well done. Uh, I want to compliment you online for that. I <laughs> found some great things in North Bend, in, in David City, and Seward, <laughs> in um, 
let's see, I've gone to Rushville. You know, I, I've traveled the state, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and please keep it up. Uh, keep genealogy materials available. Great. All right. Um, the person who asked about the check said, thank you very much. That's good to know right. if they may be in contact with you guys. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we will wrap it up for today. No other urgent questions seem to come in while we were chatting. Okay. Um, and it is about 10 after 11. So, um, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up. Thank you so much, uh, Sabrina and Judy. This is great. Um, good research out there. As I said, um, we're recording this. Um, I do have the slides, so we'll have those posted as well if you want to go back and reference any of those or look at any of the photos that were in there. And all the websites are mentioned here. Another few things I've been collecting, um, as you mentioned, the um, – the article that was in the Nebraska Union College alumni um, um, paper about the uh, magazine about the, the flag, I've got that. Um, the podcast episode that you're on, I've got that specific podcast episode. Cap, I got that from that one. You. So um, all this will be included afterwards. You can go back and check up on everything. Good. Good. Um, let's get that done. All right. Great. All right. So um, this, the recording, everything should be available um, by this afternoon, as long as YouTube and everything outside of here cooperates with me. Okay. <laughs> we understand we'll see. how that goes. So uh -huh. that will wrap it up for today's show. I hope you join us next week. Um, now, if you are um, looking for our website, Encompass Live, you can just Google Encompass Live. Just type it in anywhere, whatever you use. And luckily, as you can see here from search results, nobody else has called anything that. So you can't really... Right. You can find us no matter, anywhere <laughs> very easily. Um, uh, our next week's topic is um, Techie, uh, Lessons Learned Establishing a Technology Maker Space. Um, this is actually another presentation just like yours that I saw at a conference. Mm. <laughs> um, last month I was at the Library Technology Conference, which is up in um, Minneapolis, St. Paul, um, Minnesota. It is a Techie Conference. Um, as I said, Library Technology Conference is what it's called. So if you are in the Midwest and into libraries and anything, even vaguely, like, I'm not a big tech person, but... Um, so we're not talking like you have to be like a computer expert or anything, um, but just interested in that or do that kind of thing related to that thing at your library. I definitely highly recommend this conference to go to every spring. It's right up there at uh, McAllister College in um, St. Paul. Um, but this is a session done by Jonathan Smith, who's actually out of um, California. He's at Sonoma State University, but he set up a makerspace at the university there, and he talked about their um, with how they did it. This is previously at California State, so he's somewhere else now, but this is what they did there. Um, it's very interesting presentation. Pros, cons, problems they had. Um, really good about you know um, seeing you know what how how you can go through the process yourself at your own university. So please do join us next week for that session. Jonathan will not be traveling here from California. <laughs> he will be with us remotely. <laughs> Couldn't convince him to come across the state country for that, but that's okay. So you can sign up for that. Any of our other upcoming shows we have here, you can see our upcoming topics. Um, more shows are always being added. Usually have about a month or so out. So you'll see um, June sessions will start coming up there as well. Um, our archives that I had mentioned earlier are right here, right beneath our upcoming shows. So you'll see here, you'll have anything that we've had on previously. Um, here's our most recent one. Um, yeah, where we see here, we have our recording, our link to our slides, and our links. It'll be the same thing for today's show. will be on there. Also, if you are on Facebook, Encompass Live does have a Facebook page where I post uh, reminders of the shows coming up, when the recording is available. Uh, so if you want to keep up to date on what we're doing this way, here's this morning. I posted, don't log in right now for anyone who wanted to come in on the fly for today's show. So if you are big on Facebook, do please pop over there and give us a like and you'll keep up with what we're doing here. Other than that, that wraps it up for this morning's show. Thank you very much, Sabrina and Judy, for being here. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and we will see you next week on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> um.